Horror is full of established franchises that have been terrifying viewers for decades. Some are full of excellent movies like Evil Dead, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Halloween, while others, well, they kind of had one good idea and have been living off that ever since. Now, the following eight film series all contain at least three movies, and all of them, bar one, fail to achieve greatness. Now, that doesn't mean the rest of the installments are bad by any means, though in some cases, well, that is exactly what it means. Yeah, you've got me red-handed. With all this in mind, though, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are eight horror movie franchises with only one great movie. But first, an honorable mention, the Amityville Horror. Okay, so while it's a relatively safe bet to say that the Amityville horror movies have produced a whole slew of stinkers from unloved sequels to Ryan Reynolds starring reboots, the reason it only gets an honorable mention on this list is that only complete psychopaths have watched every single Amityville movie in existence. That's because, shockingly, there are about 25 movies that bear the Amityville name. And to make my life worse, there are just as many out there that are adapted in some way from the original story. So if the lists that I checked for researching this article are to be trusted, that makes about 50 movies based on this franchise. And my friends, as much as I love you all, there is no way in this hell that I'm watching all of those just to make sure that there isn't a real hidden gem in that pile. But I can say that while the original is great, every other one that I've seen at least has been pretty shoddy, and I don't don't hold out much hope for the stuff that I haven't seen, like 2022's Amityville in space. Did I make that title up? Hell no, if I could come up with a concept as good as that, I would not be doing these videos. Still, like I say, it would be unfair to pass judgement on an entire franchise that I haven't experienced front to back, but it still gets a place on this list because, well, the sheer volume of bad Amityville movies is just nuts. Number 8, Annabelle. Annabelle is a rather strange horror property in that the best movie starring the title character doesn't actually belong in this franchise. That's because Annabelle appeared first in the original Conjuring movie before becoming popular and scary enough to get her own headlining spin-off series. And while I personally like all of the Annabelle movies, shock, I know, I swear I have okay taste, even I have to concede that it's only the second movie, Annabelle Creation, that could be truly classed as great. Directed by the excellent David F. Sandberg, this prequel took all the complaints about the original and turned them on their head, delivering memorable characters, a unique period setting, and a boatload of effective set pieces. The third flick, Annabelle Comes Home, is also an enjoyable enough romp as well, but not one you'd hold up as a horror great. And while we've no doubt seen the last of this sinister doll, so far only the second flick has managed to prove why the character deserves her own movie series. Number 7. Return of the Living Dead I love Return of the Living Dead. The weirder, funnier, more punk rock cousin to George A. Romero's Dead series, this franchise stretches the idea of what zombies can be, turning them into a rotten, brain-hungry mob birthed from a deadly gas. The first flick in the series is absolutely bonkers. From Shaun of the Dead-esque humour between two bozos who accidentally unleashed the zombie gas in the first place, to now iconic naked graveyard dancers, it kind of has everything. It is totally daft, but in the best possible way while allowing itself to stand apart with a more vibrant colour palette and some truly nasty sequences. Unfortunately, despite bringing back some of the original players, the sequel, Return of the Living Dead Part 2, completely lacked the energy that made the original so fun. It's not awful, but it has the crime of being far more boring than the original, acting as a cheap imitation rather than a true follow-up. And unfortunately, things would only get worse from there, with a slew of straight DVD follow-ups that were seemingly only made to cash in on the recognisable title. The original still stands the test of time as a zombie great, but the rest are better left off rotting in the ground. Number 6. From Dusk Till Dawn Sin City, Alita Battle Angels, Spy Kids, Machete, The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. That's just a small sample of the pick and mix that is director Robert Rodriguez's filmography. Missing from that list though is From Dusk Till Dawn, a horror come thriller written by Quentin Tarantino. You know the drill by now, the action begins when two unlikely siblings, those of course being the foot lover himself and his on-screen sibling George Clooney, take a family hostage, but accidentally end up wandering into a bar frequented 
murdered by vampires. And yeah, don't you just hate it when that happens? Now, what you might not know is there have also been a bunch of follow-ups released since this iconic original, including a sequel subtitled Texas Blood Money. Now, alarm bells went off as soon as it was revealed that barely any of the original cast were reappearing and that Tarantino and Rodriguez had been relegated to executive producers. And so it was no surprise when Texas Blood Money was savaged by critics upon its release. But that didn't stop another film, The Hangman's Daughter, being released the very next year. That had yet another different cast and was once again ripped to pieces by critics. Number 5. Final Destination now, hold your horses. Here's where I get into semantics. Now, this list specifies that these franchises only have one great movie in them, but that doesn't mean that the other movies are all bad. And in the case of Final Destination, there are some really good movies to talk about. After all, the original is heaps of fun, the sequel ups the ante, and the fifth movie, shockingly, is maybe stronger than both of them. In fact, the fifth movie is the only one to be certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. The more you know, hey? For my money, though, it's Final Destination 3 that's the only truly great installment. Delivering memorable characters, iconic kills that we still talk about ad nauseum today, especially the answer, well, and some killer music moments. From the roller coaster opening to the haunting, ominous final scene, FD3 finds the balance between true horror and dark comedy that kind of evaded the original flicks. It's a confident movie, and for that reason, I'd put it a cut above the rest, even though, hey, I love this franchise to bits, and they're all pretty good in their own way. Well, except for four, four sucks. Number four, Jaws. How could you possibly top the suspense, the grandeur, and the history of Steven Spielberg's 1974 mega hit Jaws? You don't. The second movie in this franchise returned to Amity Island to show that it was being attacked by, surprise, surprise, yet another shark. And this time it's up to Roy Schneider's Chief Brody to once again save his town from the beastie, which he manages to do by electrocuting it. The film did okay, but it was no, well, Jaws. But maybe things could improve with the second sequel, Jaws 3D. <clears throat> Spoiler alert, they absolutely did not improve at all. Set in SeaWorld, the third Jaws film absolutely sucked. But unfortunately, it made enough money to warrant a fourth film, which ended up being the infamously bad Jaws The Revenge. The majesty of the first Jaws movie was truly spoiled by the greedy studios who wanted to milk Bruce for all he was worth, so let's just hope he at least took a chunk out of them whilst he was going down. Number 3. The Ring Let's get this out of the way now before things get super confusing. We're only talking about the English language Ring films here. That's The Ring, The Ring 2, and Rings. We're not including any of the original Japanese films in the series or the Korean remake because, quite frankly, it's kind of unfair for them to be tarnished by this sorry lot. A remake of the 1998 Japanese movie Ring, 2002's The Ring stars Naomi Watts as a journalist trying to solve the secret of a cursed videotape before it claims the life of her young son. It's the whole watch it and then you die thing that has been co-opted by thousands of scam emails over the years. And unlike a lot of remakes, especially at the time, The Ring absolutely owned, living up to the horror and melodrama of the original flick. It was received very well upon its release and a sequel, The Ring 2, got put out in 2005 with Japanese director Hideo Nakata at the helm. Now you might think that this would help the project, but you'd be wrong, as the sequel was slammed for its cliched and dull script to the point where it took a full 12 years for a third movie to get made. But they probably needn't have bothered because Rings was by far the worst one yet, even if it did have a pretty sick ending. Number 2. Poltergeist Back to Spielberg now and a film that he wrote and co-produced in 1982. Poltergeist tells the story of the Freeling family as they attempt to save their young daughter from the clutches of an evil spirit. It quickly became a horror institute, picking up three Oscar nominations along the way, and FYI, that's enough for each of its god-awful follow-ups. Poltergeist 2, The Other Side, managed to bring back most of the first film's cast, but had zero involvement from Spielberg, who was kind of making a habit on this list of dodging dodgy sequels. The movie itself was fine, but a significant step down from its predecessor, and then came a third movie, which was given overwhelmingly negative feedback. And that was the final Poltergeist movie until 2015, when a remake premiered starring Sam Rockwell and Rosemary DeWitt. However, not even a reboot could wipe away the stink of the previous sequels, and this was panned as well. Number 1. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 9. There are 9 films in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, and you know how many of them have above 50% on Rotten Tomatoes? 1. 
and it's the very first one to boot. But hey, what does Rotten Tomatoes know? For my money, like Final Destination, there are some good movies in this franchise. I mean, the second flick is severely underrated, while the first remake kind of rocks. Hell, there's even a lot to like about prequel Leatherface as well. But truthfully, if we're talking truly great installments, one that you can recommend to anyone and confidently say this is an excellent movie and you'll love it, well, that's only the iconic original. Still as grimy and unnerving today as it was all the way back in 1974, that original shook the world of film to its very core. Pretty much every horror property has tried to rip it off since, but unfortunately nobody's been able to truly replicate its charms. We have had, admittedly, enough good Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies to justify this franchise continuing, but none that have ever threatened to dethrone the one that started it all. So, that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Would you say that any of these franchises have more than one great movie? And are there any other ones you would have had on here instead? Let me know, and while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Horror for more lists like this on the regular. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.